Hello there, it's Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I am playing with Iron On Ink to transfer my stamped images onto a hard surface. So no cards today, but we're gonna have tons of fun. First thing we're gonna do is take a look at the products that Artist Free sent me. They are a family-based business out of Florida. They opened up shop in 2018, creating sublimation products for crafters. So sublimation normally works when something is printed with a specialty ink and that image then feels like it's part of the surface. It's not raised up. It's not anything that you can feel. So they sent me a whole bunch of stuff so I could try this out with their products that are made for crafting and try something new with my stamps. So they sent me a bunch of directions and helpful tips and project ideas. And then they sent me things to do sublimation tons of fun stuff actually so first up let's take a look at this ink pad this is iron on ink this is the sublimation ink it's a specialty ink that allows this process of transferring a solid to a gas to a solid onto a hard surface it's very sciencey but it's totally fun and i'm going to show you how it works in today's video so there's the sublimation ink in black they also have markers with sublimation ink. This is the bright set. They have a chisel tip and there are 10 different colors. So I'm using these markers in my projects today. And then let's look at this little ink refill that refills the black pad. I've heard you can also do different techniques with it, but I'm not sure what those are at this time. Okay, here are the hard surfaces that I'm using in my video today. We have a plastic keychain a maple bag tag and these metal bookmarks. Now these are coated with a polyester coating and that is important because that's what is going to allow that ink to transfer via sublimation. So having a polyester surface is key to doing this process. Next, we have this silicone mat that we're gonna put down when we do the transferring process because it transfers with heat. So we need something to protect our surface that's going to be able to take that heat and not you know, ruin your surface. So that's a really nice tool. Then there is protective paper. This is siliconized paper. This is gonna protect your mat. It's gonna protect your um, iron and, or whatever you're using to heat it up and it has um, been siliconized. So next we have heat tape. So this is tape to tape your hard surface down onto your stamped image and it's not going to melt. Next we have some stamps because when you do sublimation your stamped image is going to be reversed. So they created stamps that are not yet reversed so when you stamp it and then put it down, it's gonna face the right way. Normally when we stamp an image, our images are backwards, if that makes sense. You'll see how it works, how it all comes together. So now I just need to collect a few items of my own. I'm gonna use stamps from Trinity Stamps because this is a collaboration with Artist Spree. I'm gonna use some copy paper and a home iron. So let's gather that and get started. Today I am using this poinsettia stamp from Trinity Stamps to do all of my projects. I have a piece of copy paper here or print paper and that's what I'm going to stamp on today and then I'm going to transfer that stamped image onto this bag tag it's um, the wood kind maple it's called I love anything wood or wood grain so I wanted to start with this one first I'm tracing this shape onto the copy paper with a pencil so I don't get any ink on my tag and then I will stamp my poinsettia with the artist spree ink that is the iron on ink. And then I can see where this is gonna go on my tag because I've traced that shape. So I'm gonna have mine offset just a little bit so some of it's coming off the side. And there's the image all stamped out and ready to be colored. I also wanted to show you that this ink actually cleans off your stamps really easy. It won't damage them at all. It might stain it a little bit. For a home iron, you need it to be as hot as it can be on the dry setting, never have any moisture that's my home iron it has the handle missing so it's perfect for the craft room next I am coloring this poinsettia up with my artist spree markers I'm using the red and the pink and you'll 
these look really dull compared to what the tips look like, but when you iron them, they become much more vibrant in that transfer process. So I use the red and the pink together for kind of a fun, different look. And then I used yellow in the center and of course green for the leaves. And um, I wasn't sure what was gonna happen. You know, would the color blend of the two colors even show up? Uh, you know, I just wasn't sure. So it's it's kind of a experiment and I was really excited to see how this would turn out. Now that it's all colored, I'm going to stamp the word peace from that stamp set from Artispree. And you can see there, it's gonna stamp it backwards, but when we transfer it, it will then be the right way. So it needs to be backwards on the stamped image. All right, this is the protective paper that we're gonna need. So you'll need two pieces. We're building a sandwich here. So one, this, this is like the bread. One will be on the top and one will be on the bottom. So you'll always need two pieces of this paper when doing sublimation. Then you're gonna take your blank, as they're called, in this case, the wood tag. I thought my marker might still be wet, but it, it dries really fast, it was not. And then the heat tape is what we're gonna use to tape that down. Now, I missed a lot of this process. I don't, my camera just kaput. So you can see the finished thing there. I'm sorry it's super short, but I, yeah, I just lost the footage. So we're gonna do it again so you can really see how this works. But I just wanted to show you that one because it came out really cool. Now for the second tag, I'm doing the same tag. There was two of those maple tags in the packaging. And so this time I started with my pink, then I'm doing my red, and then at the very tip of the poinsettia, I'm gonna do orange to give this a lot of variety. You know, poinsettias are varied in color and have some interest to each of the petals and so I thought I would do that. I did the yellow in the center again and then the green for the leaves. And now that I'm coloring with these markers for a second time, I'm using the point at one end of this chisel tip and kind of coloring in a circular motion and I found that the easiest for me to do. On this one, I'm gonna stamp the word love there at the bottom and it will come out the right way once we iron this. So now let's go over this process again because I have the tag traced, I know right where to put it and then where to tape it down. So I can just use this heat tape and you don't wanna use another kind of tape because you could either melt the tape or get sticky residue on your project. This is not going to melt. It's not gonna be affected by the heat and there's quite a bit of heat on here for a long time, so that's important. And then I have my sublimation protective paper, one on the bottom, and you can see I flip that over so that the thing closest to me is the paper. And on the highest setting with no heat, I ironed this for three minutes without moving it. Well, I tried not to. I might have moved it a little bit, and I'll tell you how I think I might have moved it, how I know. There's a little smear right above the uh, L of green. So I think I might have moved it. Also, if your iron has holes in the bottom, you wanna avoid using that area of the iron on your tag because no heat will come out of the holes. So there's my two wooden tags. I am loving how they turned out and I am going to transform them a little bit at the end. So stay tuned for how I embellish them. Next, I'm going to work on this plastic keychain and for this one I colored the poinsettia the exact same way I did on the last tag but I didn't want there to be any white area so I brought in this blue marker and I filled in all the area around the poinsettia that was white then again we tape the um blank as they call it in place. We put the sandwich on the top and the bottom, make sure the paper is closest to you, that's like the cheese of your sandwich, hot iron with no liquid, no mist, no steam for three minutes without moving the iron. Then you wanna let it set because it's gonna be really hot. And then once it's cooled down a little bit, you can totally peel it off. Man, this turned out so amazing. You can see the difference in that tag versus the paper and how bright it came out. Wow. So now I'm working on one of the metal tags. I am writing out the word read with a pencil. Now I do not love my own handwriting for things like this. If I'm just writing on paper, my handwriting is good. But then I get super nervous when I want to put it on something permanent like this. But I wanted to show it to you how to do this. So you, um, have your two pieces of paper with trace tags back to back. So you can line them up 
And once the trace tags are lined up, you have your part that you wrote the word on. Remember, it's back to back. So now we can trace it backwards with the sublimation marker. Does that make sense? I hope it does. And then um, it's in that sublimation ink, so when I iron it, it's gonna show up the right way. Now for this poinsettia, I've seen some that are kind of speckled, so I thought I would color this one with kind of some openings in between my little spirals as I'm coloring them, so it might be a little bit speckled. Now I hope it looks like it's speckled when it comes out and not like bad coloring, so we'll see and you can let me know what you think. So I finished the poinsettia and the leaves, and then I added a little blue like highlight around the edge. Like I just wanted to play with different ways to use this stuff so you could kind of get a feel for it. And um, if this is something you wanna try, you've got some ideas, okay? And <laughs> I will have Artist Brie linked for you below so you can check them out. Now I have this tag face down. Now this is the only one that's different on the back than it is on the front. So make sure it's face down. Also, if your um, protective paper has ink on it, then you don't wanna use it again. If you don't have ink on it, feel free to use it again and you can use it multiple times. Okay, so again, we have our sandwich, the protective paper, top and bottom, and then our sublimation hard surface is down towards the mat and the paper's up towards us. After three minutes, then we can let that cool, especially this metal one, and then peel it off and reveal it. Now. The artist free people say you do want to give it a little peek when you're first done, just in case it didn't um, transfer all the way. You can reapply the heat. So if you um, have some like hot holders or you know gloves that are like a hot pad, that's a really good thing to use to peek and make sure it's done. And then if you needed to reheat it, you totally could. So I added the little keychain there. It just folds over and snaps in place. And there's also a rubber attacher for the luggage. It's like a luggage tag attacher, but I wanted to make mine a little bit more like a tag that could be reused. You could hang this, put this on a gift, but I decided to add a little bit of glitter to the edge. So this is tinsel glitter, and I'm gonna put a little bit on this folded in half piece of paper and use some glaze here. This is just some like um, crystal clear glaze, and then that's gonna pick up that glitter so so well and hold really well. There will be a lot of excess glitter, but um, it'll eventually wear off. So now I'm adding some ribbon from my stash to the top of this. Once I had the glitter all the way around and it was completely dry, I added this ribbon and then I have some green and white twine and a little bell. I'm using like a flosser here that you can put the end of the twine through and then you pull the flosser through that bell and it threads it for you. So that is super helpful. Then this will just get tied around that ribbon at the top of the tag for a little extra accent. And now I feel like I have something really special that I could hang on a gift bag that could be reused multiple times. So you can use this for other things besides travel, but it makes a really good travel tag too. Okay, the glitter is going to eventually stop shedding, and I think it's really fun, but I have another idea for you. If you're not into glitter, stay tuned at the end. I have pictures of my piece tag with an idea you might like. Okay, now here is my keychain. I added a few uh, charms to this that I just made with beads, and I thought that really helped dress it up and make it a lot of fun, um, besides the sublimation part that was so much fun to make. All right, here's my piece tag. I colored the edge with my black wink of Stella pen added the same ribbon bell twine mixture there at the top. So these are really fun to play with. I had a blast transferring those images. I thought it was so much fun. Um, I would love to know what you think. So leave me a comment below and let me know what you think of sublimation and would you try it? I have the Artistry website linked for you below so you can check them out and I will see you all again very soon on the next video. Happy stamping! Bye.